The Digital Monster was a massive hit, and Bandai knew they couldn't just repeat the same device with different characters over and over again. So after five versions, the Digital Monster series came to a close. And on this third episode of a brief history of Digimon V-Pets, we will take a look at its follow-up, the Digimon Pendulum. The best way to describe the Digimon Pendulum is refinement. It would really polish a lot of the great features and concepts that already existed in the Digital Monster into a form that is more recognizable to fans of Digimon in general. For the most part, you had all the same features as the Digital Monster, so you could just jump straight into raising a Digimon on the Digimon Pendulum without skipping a beat. The icons were even in the same order and did the same things, but as we look closer, we begin to see the differences. This pendulum here is a Pendulum 2.0, but not my original one. This is my original one, and unfortunately, it no longer connects to other devices, meaning it can't evolve past adults. When your favorite Digimon is Zudomon, a perfect level, that just won't do, so I got a second one. I first learned about the Digimon Pendulum series around the same time the show started airing in the United States, thanks to various fan sites and the documentation on Bandai's official Japanese Digimon website, and I was immediately fascinated. I would look for them in the stores near me, but eventually I realized that all the information I found was from Japanese sources because the devices never released in the United States. Which was a major bummer for me, as I really wanted to raise Gomamon. In fact, there were no Digimon Virtual Pets released in the United States after the Digital Monster version 2, until 20 years later with the English release of the Digital Monster version 20th. As for the Pendulum, it would be several years before I managed to get my own in 2006, when I ordered both the 2.0 and the 4.0, and later on I picked up a 1.0 as well. So let's start by looking at the stats. For the most part, we have all the same stats as the Digital Monster, but there is a new page. On this page, the first thing we see is Type, otherwise known as Attribute. This would be the first time Digimon would get assigned an attribute of Vaccine, Data, or Virus, and these attributes had advantages over each other to create Digimon's signature Rock, Paper, Scissors mechanic. Vaccine is stronger than Virus, Virus is stronger than Data, and Data is stronger than Vaccine. From the child stage onward, the Digimon on the Pendulum were evenly divided into one of these three attributes to create a fair balance for battles. Speaking of battles, that's what the B on the stat screen indicates. If a circle is next to the B, your Digimon can battle, and if it has an X, it cannot. But what about the J? This was another new feature for the Pendulum, Joggersing. If your Digimon was able to joggress, a shorthand word for joint progress, you could connect to another player's device and perform a joggress evolution assuming that your Digimon were compatible. Certain forms, like Jagamon, Dagomon, and Garudamon, could only be achieved via Jagras. If you're more familiar with the English terms, Jagrasing was localized as DNA Digivolution. There was no guarantee that a Digimon could evolve to perfect or ultimate on its own, so Jagrasing was a surefire way to reach these stages, though the vaccine ultimate could only be achieved by evolving naturally. Oh yeah, the ultimate stage. We haven't brought that up yet. While the digital monster stopped at perfect, the Digimon Pendulum introduced a stage beyond that, Ultimate. Perfect stages were now more commonplace on the Pendulum, with just as many perfect forms as there were adult forms, six of each per device, but only three Ultimates per device. The evolutions were also themed this time around, instead of the somewhat random nature of the Digital Monster series. There were six themes across 11 devices, Nature Spirits for Insects, Minerals, and Beastly Digimon, Deep Savers for Aquatic Digimon, Nightmare Soldiers for Spooky Digimon, Wind Guardians for Flying and Plant Digimon, Metal Empire for Metallic Digimon, and Virus Busters for, well, anime protagonists mostly. The first five versions would see a second release called a Dot .5 version, with translucent shells and three Digimon swapped in the roster. For example, the Digimon Pendulum 2.5 replaces Silamon with a Beedramon, Animalokarimon with Hangyomon, and Metal Seedramon with Plesiomon. By this point you may be wondering why it's called a Digimon Pendulum in the first place. It's very simple. The device contains a pendulum counter. This allows the device to detect how many times it is shaken, which is used in four ways. The most prominent ways are for training and battles, where you would need to shake the correct number of times to get a mega hit, which is a term for five strong shots in a row. Zudomon here is easy, it only requires two shakes to get its mega hit. Shaking also comes into play when you hatch your Digimon. If you shake it 100 times before it hatches, 
you will be given an additional 10% chance to evolve into perfect and ultimate, which is very important since by default you only have a 50% chance. Lastly, if your Digimon is dying, you can shake it as fast as you can, and if you do it enough, it will come back to life. The last big changeup with the Digimon Pendulum would be the fact that the battle system was updated. It was no longer a simple win or loss, as your Digimon instead had 3 HP. Weak shots remove 1 HP, while strong ones remove 2. The first Digimon to lose all their HP loses. Attribute played a key factor in these battles, so which path you decided to evolve down was a very important choice. For example, if you knew a friend was raising Boltmon, you might want to try to raise Metal Edamon to gain the advantage. The trend of using a new battle system on each device would continue, as most Digimon V-Pet series have a battle system unique to them, though most of them can use the other battle system as well. Be careful with fighting against the Pendulum though. It's programmed in a way to ensure that it will almost always win when fighting against the device using the original Digital Monster battle system. Close to halfway through the run of the Digimon Pendulum series, the anime and card game came out. Last time we talked about how much they pulled from the Digital Monster series, and they pulled just as much from the Pendulum series. The first two Pendulum versions featured two of the Digidestin Digimon from the first anime series, Gomamon and Tentomon. Unlike what was done with the child level Digimon taken from the Digital Monster, there weren't any changes made for their evolution lines, both kept their top care line from the Pendulum through the perfect form, though Atler Kabuterimon was changed to red in what can be considered one of the greatest tragedies in the history of Digimon. Weregururumon also appeared for the first time as an evolution for Garurumon in the Pendulum 3.0. After that point, the anime seems to start influencing the Pendulum series as well, or at the very least, the planning for both became intertwined. All of the eight original Digidestined Digimon would appear across the Pendulum versions with their anime evolution lines, apart from Patamon, though Anjimon and Holy Anjimon did appear. Unfortunately, Zudomon's line was slightly changed later when it came to Digimon Adventure Tri, as instead of evolving into Marine Angemon, like it does on the Pendulum, it evolves to Vikemon, but oh well. And what about the other Digimon featured on the Pendulum? They would be featured very heavily starting in the Vamdemon arc of the anime, and the different fields themselves were part of the central plot for the Dark Masters arc, which featured Deep Savers, Nightmare Soldiers, Wind Guardians, and Metal Empire, all captained by one of the ultimate Digimon on those devices. Not only that, but several of them would also appear in Digimon Adventure 02, as partner Digimon for the International Digidestined, including Gatsumon, Shakoman, and Ganimon. And then we come to the card game. Just like the anime, it was very heavily based on a combination of the Digital Monster and Digimon Pendulum. The Pendulum brought three key pieces in, Attribute, Jogress, and Field. Each Digimon had a battle type, and these battle types were largely based on the attribute system that the Pendulum used, with A being Vaccine, B being Data, and C being Virus. Attribute and battle type would later stop correlating directly but at least in the first few sets, they were closely tied together. Joggersing also worked exactly like it did in the Pendulum, where you could reach a higher level by combining two Digimon together. The primary design of the cards themselves was majorly impacted by the Digimon Pendulum's use of fields. For example, Deep Saber's Digimon would have blue water behind them, while Nightmare Soldier's Digimon would have purplish smoke. So now that we've covered two Digimon Virtual Pets, I can introduce another component to this series. My thoughts on each pet compared to the others. So how do I like the Digimon Pendulum compared to the Digital Monster? Honestly, I feel it's an across-the-board improvement, and I absolutely hold it above the Digital Monster. There is a lot of charm to be found in the original, for sure, and it features a lot of great monsters. But the Digimon Pendulum has even more Digimon per device, a more intricate battle system, a fun joggersing mechanic, and honestly, I think they look better too. Not to mention, they have a device with nothing but aquatic creatures, and those are my absolute favorite types of Digimon. Honestly, I just like aquatic anything. That being said, there are a few downsides. Because you can't guarantee evolution to perfect, you may find that you can't always get an ultimate Digimon, no matter what you do. It does at least feel great when you succeed, but you are definitely going to fail sometimes through no fault of your own. You may also find that shaking isn't something that you like to do on a V-Pet, which is fair, but I have bad news. Shaking comes up a lot in Digimon V-Pets. Thankfully, I don't personally mind the shaking, as long as I don't have to shake too much, and this device definitely requires very little shaking. 
One other disappointing thing is that certain Digimon just can't evolve to Ultimate, no matter what. If you raise Jagamon, Nature Spirits Anjouamon, Waymon, Nature Spirits Weregarurumon, Garudamon, Andromon, or Cyberdramon, you are stuck. They cannot evolve no matter what, which is a shame. Funnily enough, Bandai apparently agreed that the randomness involved with reaching Ultimate and the fact that certain Digimon couldn't evolve was a negative thing. So they addressed both of these items in the Digimon Pendulum version 20, but you still have to shake. Overall, the Digimon Pendulum definitely goes above the Digital Monster in my personal ranking of all Digimon V-Pets. It definitely looks like these episodes may be going longer than I anticipated, but there's just so much to talk about. The Digimon Pendulum was another tentpole in the franchise, but surprisingly enough, it would be the last Digimon virtual pet for a few years, as Bandai shifted its focus to capitalizing on the wildly successful anime series by introducing a new type of electronic toy that I'll cover on the next video. If you want to see more videos in this series, check out the playlist on your screen, and please consider subscribing so that you will know as soon as another video is released. Until next time, bye!